Good morning, everyone. Welcome to Student Device Pickup Details. We have um, hit the record button, so let's make sure you know that um, we've got record going to help you. We also are adding to the chat the document that we are about to share with you in case you want to follow along. The document has um, some links to uh, some important things we're going to discuss. At the same time, the document link that's in the chat is also in your calendar invite for this morning. I have this being recorded so that if you need to jump up and leave for some reason, or if you want to be able to share it with someone else, you'll have that capability. I'll make sure you also have access to the recording after it is over. Thanks for joining us in Teams. We appreciate you all um, using Teams with us this spring semester. It has gone really well so far. I know, um, I think everyone knows I'm Tara Cahill. I work in the technology department. I have the most fabulous dynamic duo here today in Julie Hungaski, who is our manager over all the um, instructional technology specialists at your campus, your library friends at your campus, your library media specialists. She also is the supervisor of your instructional media aides. I have the other half of the, um, the dynamic duo, which is Antoine Robertson. He's our director of technology support. He supports your district uh, district support technicians that are at your campus. And we just want to make sure you know they're both here today. They're going to um, help us lead this session, which we will finish by 11 or hopefully a tad bit earlier. We know we're going to have some questions and we want to make sure we answer all your questions. So we will stay for even further questions if we need to at the end today. But the topic is student device pickup details. That's what you saw in the calendar invite. In the chat, you'll find the link of the document that I'm going to go ahead and start sharing so that we can go through it all together. The first thing I want to start with is just a super quick connecting question. When, because we know how you all are as principals and campus leaders, we do it in our department as well. <laughs> Dr. Steger knows she has asked us some great questions such as this before, but when you work from home on the evenings and weekends, because we, we don't say if, it's when, because you do, <laughs> where do you like to work? A home office? Do you like your kitchen table? Do you like the backyard? Do you like to sit on the bed, lay in the bed? Um, is there somewhere else? If anyone would love to share that, we would not mind you jumping off for just a moment and sharing when you work from home on the evenings or weekends, where do you do that? So I have a home office, but it's on the other side of my home and I just never go there. So I just work <laughs> from my my uh, kitchen table, sometimes on my couch while I'm watching TV. <laughs> I love it. Thank you, Miss Aguilar, that's perfect. Anyone else wanna share? I also like the dining room table. Uh, it's sometimes nice to pretend that you're having family time because you can hear them running around you. Um, and uh, <laughs> but if I need to, uh, if I need to feel a little bit less like I'm in the middle of everything, I can go to the. We have a little desk in the bedroom that I like to post up at. That's great, Brandon. I'm a dining room table mm -hmm. person as well. Dr. Bridges, sometimes my cat jumps up there with me. It's like she knows from the COVID days. Yes. Oh, she's back on the table. Let me oh, jump on the table. Just no about kidding. to say, anytime <laughs> I try to work on my kitchen table or my dining room table, the, one of the three cats is right there with me to help. I love it. I'm, I love I'm it. a fan, Terry, of the, the dining room table as well. And um, I, I get I have a long white paper roll that I stretch out all the way across the table and I tape it down and then I have all of my markers and stuff so I can write up everything and I've got my laptop on the other side because I got I'm a pretty uh, messy worker when I'm at the house I want to be able to see everything like I've got a whiteboard so and the windows right there I so I can, can, still... <laughs> I can see you doing that uh -huh. I love it <laughs> so Any I last... work yeah I'm sorry Please. I work from the home office just so that I can isolate from everything and everybody because I get easily distracted 
And so if I hear someone talking, I want to know what they're talking about. If I see someone walking, I want to know where they're going. And so I need to be closed off. <laughs> that is smart, Ms. Fowler. I love it. I love the dining room because it's super close to the kitchen. So yes. every five minutes I can go get something to eat. Yeah. Chris, that's yeah. me too. And mine's in the kitchen right there. <laughs> I have a home office as well. Never used it. It's a waste okay. of space. It looks cute, <laughs> but I work from the um, love seat in my bedroom in the seat in, sitting area. But that's where you okay. store all the stuff at, though, right, Dr. Hancock? It all gets stored in the office, and then you just yes, it does. Post. I can go yeah. print from there. I can yeah. go get envelopes if I need them. Yeah. But it doesn't get used. Like well, I all. love that it's, that it's decorated pretty. I know you, and I bet it is beautiful. Yes, my piano is in there from my childhood. Everything oh, it looks great. Nice. <laughs> it does not get used. I love Very it. Nice. Very nice. Thank you all for sharing that. I appreciate that. Thanks for letting us get started off with that fun connecting question, because I know you all are overachievers and work uh, till the midnight oil is burning. So um, I do want to share this document that we're sharing right now. Remember, it's in the chat. We have met with these teams already. So Julie's teams, instructional technology friends, the library friends, and Antoine's technicians, they know this information. We um, have answered a lot of their questions. They're probably going to ask us more questions. Julie's going to talk about her team a little bit when we get further into the spreadsheet area and really the who of how we're going to pick up these devices. But I just want to let you know, her team is probably the most nervous, the most worried, because it is a big task. It's a lot to talk about. So she's going to talk about the schedule piece, but we just wanted you to know we have already met with these teams and um, have the information out to them. The next thing I want to share with you is folders with some letters. Um, you, you remember a while back, Dr. Steger visited with us about this communication about picking up some of the devices, and we have followed through on that. We have a folder for letters that you have a link to there, and I'm going to share that with you now. The first letter is the district letter, that we are taking care of for you. That's why we use in capital letters, we are sending this out. It is, um, in, we're gonna send out the English and Spanish, of course, depending on what the parents re you know, request um, from our district communication. We've already spoken with Lauren McMillan and Miss Broom about this, and they are prepared to possibly send this letter today. So once we jump off this, um, teams and we kind of get all of our ducks in a row one more time, we're going to visit with them about sending this letter. The letter is basically saying we're thanking parents for everything. We hope this message finds them, you know, healthy and happy. And we are going to inform them that to in order to be prepared for next year, we are picking up the devices. We're going to prepare them for next year. And in some grade levels, refreshing. So you all would have heard Dr. Steger's April school board meeting where she brought to the school board an information item. She did a beautiful job. She answered all their questions about a refresh of student iPads in grades 6 through 12. The plan is for that to um, be a um, action item in the May school board meeting. So we are letting our parents know that if they have um, not brought their devices back, lots of elementaries have already been doing this and bless you and thank you for that. We are letting them know if they are um, is not if they're not attending a school, a school where devices have already been brought, we are asking those to be picked up. We are kindly asking them to turn in the accessories, um, which means the charger, the case, et cetera. We're going to talk with the details about that in just a moment, but Basically, this letter is getting a start for you that we are telling them the information. Any questions about that district letter so far or the information that we've already shared with the teams? We wanted y'all to know that because we're going to go to the campus letter. And Antoine and Julie, if y'all both help me check the chat, I don't want to miss anything. Oh, I don't I have it open. I don't see anything yet. Good deal. OK, next on our agenda is the campus letter. Um, we spoke with Dr. Steger and she had a great idea that we start with a campus letter for you to edit as you desire. 
So this campus letter is in that folder that I've linked for you. It's a start for you to let you tell parents, if you would like, that on May 7th, if the plan goes as we expect, that district letter came today, and that possibly even say tomorrow, Thursday, Friday, next week, whenever you decide to send a campus letter, if you need to send a campus letter, Again, some of the elementaries already have these there. I don't imagine uh, Maggie Garcia would send something like this because she's already done it, y'all. She doesn't need to send the same type of letter, but we want to give you a template to start if you would like. It even has um, an image that if you would like to use it that share some of the um, costs associated with a with an iPad. Notice they're all about an iPad. We've also left a, a separate area. If you want to tell them, we would think you might want to tell them the date. Is there a class period? Is it homeroom, elementary? Is it what What all do you need to put in there to let them know when those devices will be picked up if they have not been picked up yet? So again, a template for you to kind of get started. If you'd like to use that, you can and edit as you would like. Any questions about the campus letter? Yes, where can we find that letter again? Um, Ms. Howard, it is on this document that I'm sharing. It's a link right here. And that link is in the chat. So you have this whole document. We also have it in the calendar invite for today. Julie, would you mind copying and pasting one more time in the chat? And we'll just make sure I see a lot of you in it, like 30 some odd people are in it, which is perfect right now. I found it. Thank you. Oh, you're good. Awesome. OK, great question. Any other questions about that campus letter? It says can be edited by you, the principal. You can have your dean edit. You can have your secretary edit. How, whoever you want to edit, they can. Let's go into the details then of the actual pickup now that we've communicated to our families. We know that we are picking up all iPads in grades pre-K through 12, and we know the why is that grades 6 through 12 are possibly going to be refreshed. Again, May school board meeting, action item, crossing our fingers. Um, and then you may be asking, well, why in grades pre-K to five? We have a lot of reasons, actually, and these are really good reasons. We are going to update them. We're going to clean them. We're going to prepare the device for the upcoming school year, which means reviewing iPad apps. We're also, really go we're also going to review the case and, and, and a lot of cases probably exchange the case for a brand new case that we already have in our shop. Any questions about the why? And we'll go to Antoine next. All right, so thank you, Tara. So thank you. So we get to the how. I'm glad you mentioned um, that the instructional staff was the most nervous right now. This is truly a <laughs> tall task for them, and uh, as well as it is for you guys. And so we thank thank you all in advance. Um, this is a very um, busy year for us as we move into our device refresh and so uh, everything that we're asking is absolutely necessary so we truly appreciate you guys uh, just kind of looking at what this process is going to look like uh, Tara mentioned earlier that we've already met with some of you with all of your instructional staff and I'm sure that many of them have already met with you some of you have probably already begun to discuss details um, on how you would start to do this but we just want to make sure you have all the information and so and you're understanding the process so as we look at how it's going to be done all of the iPads will be erased um, and this means that they will physically have to erase all content and settings in the general section of the iPad. What this does is it ensures that each student is signed out correctly, that they're signed out of their Apple ID, that there are no screen time passcodes that are used that are still on the iPad that is locked. Um, we need these all to be signed out because as they go off, um, to our vendor, uh, they can't move forward uh, with the provisioning piece of it if students are still signed in and then that's a delay for us. So uh, we truly want to be able to get all the machines taken care of and back in a timely manner. And so we need to make sure that um, 
we get as much of this done as possible, if not all. We want all the devices to be at the hello screen. Um, that's how you know that they've been erased properly. They'll be at the hello screen. And then we want to power them down. Now, in the past, when we picked up devices or we've gotten ready for a refresh, you some of you may remember that we actually took the cases off of all of these iPads ourselves uh, before shipping them off, or either we brought them to the shop and we did them here. But this time around, uh, we know that everybody's super busy. And so we worked out some processes to where you can leave the cases on the iPad. Uh, all we need you to do is truly leave those on the iPad and box the iPads. Uh, there will be boxes provided to you guys um, and there will be separate boxes for your iPads and for your MacBooks and then there'll be also boxes for your chargers. Um, when the bo when boxing the iPads, there also be a bubble wrap uh, packaging provided, and this is just going to keep uh, the devices uh, from moving around. Uh, sometimes when we pack them, even when we pack those 20 per box with iPads, there's still a little space left on the side. So these devices will travel quite a way. So we want to make sure that we get the correct packaging in there so they won't be moving around. Um, and then um, the iPads that are broken, uh, these will be boxed separately then the iPads that we know that we've seen are in good working condition. The broken ones still need to be treated as if we treat them throughout the year, meaning there's got to be a work order place for them. But if you remember in the past, so when we get to the end of the year, there's usually a time crunch and not enough time to enter all of these work orders. Uh, so we worked with my school bucks uh, to come up with a process uh, that will help us get the work orders uh, entered for each of these devices uh, fairly more quickly than usual. Uh, and that's going to be contingent now that everybody is using the spreadsheet properly, which Julie is going to come and talk about uh, in just a second. We have a couple spreadsheets that we want to show you uh, that's going to be extremely important uh, that we're using these so that we can get the information um, transferred um, and, and be streamlined across the district so that everybody has the information in the same place. This is going to help us greatly because the uploads for all the work orders are going to be contingent on what's in these sheets. Um, but the technology department is going to take care of that for you. Um, is there are any questions so far about um, what we're talking about as far as getting the devices erased, getting them boxed? Um, Antoine, getting... we do have one question in the chat. Okay. It's a really good one from Miss okay. Fowler okay. Um, from her days at the campus, which is great. If the cases are left on, how do we verify that the iPad we are receiving belongs to the district? Oh, good deal. So mm -hmm. all, all of our devices uh, should be asset tagged. Uh, we provide an asset tag uh, once we receive any device in for purchase. We tag those things and then we collect the inventory and we put that inventory in our in our system IQ. This is the same inventory system that you use for work orders. So it should be very visible because each of the um, the iPads should have a clear casing on the back where you can see through and there you'll see the district asset tag. Uh, if you have a, a device for whatever reason that doesn't have an asset tag, we use the serial number to uh, verify. And so there are a number of ways that you can tell if it's a district owned device. Uh, so in IQ, um, um, your instructional staff will be able to look up a student's ID number. And when they pull up that student's ID number, it should show the associated device with that student. Now, if they have that device in their hands, it's just as simple to tap on the general uh, to go in settings and then tap on the general tab, which will reveal uh, the device serial number, which they can then match up uh, to the serial number that's referenced in IQ for that student. Great question, Ms. Fowler. I don't know if y'all saw, but I, we have um, 16 FAQs, and that's now the 16th one. I went ahead and added that, Ms. Fowler, and I Thank started you. the answer. I just didn't go into the details yet, but we'll add that. What thank Antoine you. said. No, thank you, Antoine. Yeah, we try to uniquely identify our devices uh, with the cases, but uh, you will have some instances where students may put uh, a like device in that case. And so that's where we try to use that asset tag. Now, if they've somehow managed to take that asset tag off and put that on the new device, uh, it will show because those tags are not friendly enough to be peeled off and then put on another device. But there are uh, several methods uh, to be able to use to identify that the, the device is district on. Excellent. Any other questions? Great, y'all are soaking in information very well. So I'm gonna uh, pass the ball to Julie and she's gonna talk to you about a, a couple of spreadsheets that we have and the significance of those spreadsheets as we move forward. 
So in order for us to keep track of everything, we have several different spreadsheets that our IMS team are filling out for us. The first one is the final device count per campus, and this is going to help us with our refresh and as well as just gathering up all those iPads. And you'll see there's lots of columns that your IMS staff have to fill out for us. Most of this will happen after they've collected the items. And so we that's why we really want to get this ball rolling. They are going to give us a count of this Gen 6 iPads, how many Gen 7 iPads. In elementary, they're going to let us know where different chargers are, if they're already in a cart or if they are <coughs> stored in boxes for us. But and Blanco. And through that. So yeah. lots of different information Blanco. that Sorry. we need to That's get from important. them. And then there's a tab also. There's a second tab at the bottom of this spreadsheet called final device storage area and this is where the boxes of ipads and laptops are going to be stored when our vendor comes to pick them up they filled this out back in april before we told them that they were boxing the elementary ipad so you may see that a couple of them say in carts and teachers classrooms i've asked them to Go back to that and update it for us. Well, they're about to However, finish the class. And I was um, gonna, what I was going to do is those kids that it's happening to, I was going to create a new session and go be, to like upstairs. It may take them a little so longer to update that. They may need to get with you to find out to create a new session where could they keep that because, yeah. um, Everything else or, on campus because some of their libraries aren't big enough to hold all of that. So that's that spreadsheet that will be filled out by our IMS team. Our next spreadsheet is the master device pickup. And I am actually going to be. Creating this for each campus. Um, this is a spreadsheet that has. All of your students. As well as either their homeroom or their advisory, depending on their level. It also has the asset tag number of their device that is assigned to them. And if for some reason that asset tag is not on the device, it has the corresponding serial number so that they can check within the iPad uh, if that is the iPad assigned to the student. We also have this set up so that anyone else can help your IMS take up the iPad as well. And then there are columns for them. So the iPad status, which is did they turn it in? Did they not turn it in? They're all drop downs so that the staff can, are the drop downs working, Tara? They were not, but we know they did yesterday. They so. did yesterday. It This is, um, this is your other, this is my, yeah, this is my master. So, there are drop downs that just give them a choice. Yes, it was turned in. No, it wasn't turned in. It's broken. It's not broken. Is there an MS? Is there a My School Bucks invoice created or not yet? There is not an uh, invoice created. And then is the iPad erased? Can you see the home screen? And that's just a simple yes or no. All of so these, this is all they've made it easy. They have yes. all the drop downs. We yeah. made it very clickable so that anyone can use this spreadsheet. It doesn't have to be an IMS. Um, it says in the in the chat, what is the criteria to determine if it's in need of repair? If it's a broken screen or if it won't turn on, then it's in need of repair. Um, that's pretty much Antoine. Can you think of anything else that we would? Yeah, I, I think for you guys, uh, our, our people who are helping out on the campus, that's just going to be an eye test for you guys. Uh, it's not we're not asking you to fully evaluate the device, no. uh, but it's just going to kind of be an eye test at that point, um, just so that we can kind of weed those out. 
before we send these off to be provisioned. Um, and then those that we miss, they'll come out later uh, in the process, but just trying to get as much done on the front end as we can. So don't fret about that too much, but it's just what you can physically see. If you see a cracked screen, if you see the home button broke, if you see something stuck in a 3.5 millimeter headphone jack or something like that, right. those are obvious things. But other than that, uh, it's just a simple eye test. And I'm going to start working on these spreadsheets today. Your IMS has access to the folder that these are in. Once their school has the spreadsheet, then they will be able to share it out to whoever is going to help them with device pickup. Any questions, any other questions about the spreadsheets? Hey, Julie, are we going to be able to add information to it that we need for the campus? Your IMS will be able to add information to it, yes. OK. Leia, it might be something we all need, though. Maybe we That's visit true. with you at the end, or if you don't mind. It's just we're, sure. the advisor that's coded in Skyward is not the period that we're picking up devices. So I need the teacher name and room number on there for the other people that are helping with our pickup process. So I just want to yes. make sure I can be. So what up. I'm going to do is I'm going to ask my secondary friends to let me know what period they're picking up. And that is the period I will pull. OK, perfect. Yep. yep. We Good thought question. of you, Leah. We already knew. Yeah. <laughs> what if it's by course and not necessarily by period? So we're picking up through ELA classes. I can um, I can get that pulled, I'm sure. Great question, Miss Baylor. Yep. She was going to, Julie, if I'm right, you were going to ask each campus what period, what course, yes. what what all that information. Each secondary yeah. campus, yes. Before and for elementary, pulls. we were just going to pull by homeroom. Yeah. Do, um, do you know? I do you know when you'll have that? <laughs> <laughs> you ready like um, tomorrow, right? With the well, <laughs> what what period are you? What period are you pull? Are you going through? We're or going. What? We're going through fifth period. Okay. And my te my I, my last faculty meeting is tomorrow. Correct. Is tomorrow. Okay, yeah. I will work on that today. I knew your last faculty meeting was tomorrow, so I will work on that for you. Okay. You'll be first. Yep. Same same for South. I mean, we're first. we're not. We just need the same type of information. It'll be fifth period advisory, same type okay. of thing, but. Perfect. So and we the need that team, but we're not going through fifth period advisory. We're just. Going if you guys want to put your school <laughs> and what period you're going through in the chat, it does get saved and I can pull it from there. Perfect. Great. And, and then the information I, on the spreadsheet is truly important because after this process is done, this is what we will use uh, to take that heavy lifting piece off of the instructional staff of putting in all of those invoices. So we will be truly sorting this spreadsheet and putting information from here uh, to upload uh, invoices to my school box. If a student has um, two devices, will they have two lines? Yes. OK, perfect. And then um, I guess how do you uh, with the other things that the kids are going to turn in chargers and things like that are we putting all of the stuff together for each student how are we going to collect those pieces and that i might be premature in the, your conversation um, no i don't think so no if you're talking about uh student ipads then you're talking about the charges that go with those uh do they need to be bagged and I'll put together kept in one spot. No, absolutely not. You'll have a box that is strictly for iPads um, and then you'll have boxes that will hold your chargers and um, and your uh, well, both pieces of your charger. Uh, so for you guys who are picking up in, in, in different locations, we might have to get extra materials to you guys because that means that you would need several additional boxes to collect in these classrooms. Mm -hmm. It was my understanding if the student didn't have the charger with the device at that time that that device was supposed to go in a separate box. Is that correct or no? No, 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 no. Yeah, you can all of the uh, iPads will just be lined up together 20 to a box. And if, if they don't bring the charger to go with it, that matter. It's supposed to go in a different box anyway, so they don't have to be kept together.
and we are going to talk about chargers in a little more detail even too. Yeah. Y'all might think of more questions yeah. after we talk about the Mac books. Yeah. yeah. So no yeah. one has any further questions for Julie? On the spreadsheet, anything? Anything? Okay. I do. I don't okay. know if this is for Julie, um, but I, I want everybody to hear this. Sandy just shared with me that when they picked up devices several years ago, um, the campuses came mm -hmm and retrieve those devices from DAP. Is that the same way that we're going to do it this year? So we would collect, you know, all of the ones we have for Jackson, for GP, so forth and so on. And someone from that campus would come and pick up the devices for those students because they're assigned to that campus, not to us. But yes. Brianna, the student is sitting in your building right now, right? That's correct. And they're enrolled in your campus, correct? Yeah, that's correct. So yeah. when I pull, when I run the spreadsheet, it will pull those kids as well as their device mm -hmm. for correct. you, and then we will are, and then we'll box them the same, and they'll be picked up from your campus the same. Correct. Sounds good. I'm yeah. fine with it. Thank yeah. you. Good yeah. news is you don't have to send anything back to nope. Jackson or all right. those other schools. Right. Okay. Thank you. Perfect. Great question, though. Mm -hmm. Okay, so MacBooks, um, we will be picking up all student MacBooks, chargers. Uh, so we ask that you pull everything out of the carts, um, everything out of teacher classrooms, any other location that uh, they're sitting or that they've been hanging out. We want to truly get every single student MacBook uh, out of those classrooms and boxed. Um, all of these MacBooks will be a part of our buyback program, uh, so we need to make sure we we retrieve each one in the past. I know we've tried to pick up some of these and we've had um, some folk that kind of hoard a few of them or hide, hide them, but it's very imperative this time that we get all of them out. Uh, they're going to be part of the buyback program and then these will be also used. Some of these next year will be used as loaners, uh, loaner devices that uh, may need to go to our teachers for one reason or the other, uh, and they'll all be issued through the help disk. And I want to make sure I know we talked about that in another meeting in the past that uh, we're trying to make uh, get everything streamlined through the help desk. That's the way that it should be. We've had in the past uh, teachers having student devices with student profiles on those devices and us not having any information as to how those devices were signed out and uh, that creates a, an issue for us on the security side as well as on the inventory side. So I want to make sure that we pick up all of those devices, get them here. There will be boxes provided for those as well. As we said a little bit earlier, uh, the MacBooks are able to be packaged 10 to a box and the iPads will be 20 to a box. And so this does not include your library circulation computers, but all of those great blue cased MacBooks that you have, and some of them have lost the case, but these are our older MacBooks that we've used um, for testing for various purposes in the classroom. And we've also given some of these out as long as the teachers were going to be pulling those back in. And if nobody has any questions about that. We'll let Tara jump into the chargers. You got it. Hey, Here. I'm sorry, uh -huh. I do. For okay. Some for summer school, um, since we have it on our campus, are we going to keep some of those carts available for our summer school classes? Yeah, I think, uh, Ms. Boyle, I have a call coming up with you. You're like on my list, maybe two down for me okay. just to kind of <laughs> look at your, your your summer school needs. I've called uh, each person in the program individually, just trying okay. to make sure that what we put on that spreadsheet with Dr. Heron, uh, we had a clear understanding of what that technology need was. And so okay. based on that phone call, uh, that'll kind of determine what we're able to leave there. We want to go with as many iPads as we can, but if there are any special needs where we just absolutely have to have laptops, we will address those. No, I think we prefer iPads too. I just want to make oh, sure. perfect. No, yeah, would well, that be the case? Then you we know, definitely we'll, we'll pull those back, and you would have iPads in in the um, in the place of those laptops. Perfect. I have a question. We use the Mac MacBooks uh, laptops for TechSmart. It's a coding program that Steam purchases for us each year. Are we packing them up? Yes. Uh, are these are these Windows laptops or are these MacBooks? They're MacBooks. Okay. That's yes. what has to be. Yes. The TechSmart yes. has to use that. That's okay. 
Yeah. Okay. Yes. Then, and do you know how many by chance that you that you've been using? I mean, we need the same amount for next year to make the program work. We use about uh, we use thirty. Okay. All right. So what we would do is I, I'm going to say yes. Your your devices will be picked up because they still need to be inventoried. And then what we've done uh, here is of late uh, this semester is we've tried to get a good handle on all of those special programs uh, where those devices are out at campuses so that we can know who has what, what applications are you using, what are the requirements, and then we're issuing devices, the devices back out based on that. So we'll get your special program logged in. We'll still retrieve those MacBooks, but we'll get your special program logged in and then where there's a need, uh, we'll make sure that um, we get you the device um, that is that is required for uh, whatever the course or program is. Do I need to send an email with that information or is that please. already logged somewhere? No, please. Okay. That would be great. And you can send that directly to me, please. Okay, will do. Perfect. Any other questions about the pickup of MacBooks? Antoine a Bailey has in the chat, I believe this is on Dr. Heron's summer school um, summer program list, but it's Fannin and their summer school. Okay. And I think you already have that on there. Yeah, if it was right, Dr. To, Heron, it's on there. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Good deal. The well, list is so long, y'all. We yeah. don't have it memorized, <laughs> but we have it. <laughs> I can tell you that it's long. <laughs> but long. no, we, we, we'll, we'll get you taken care of. And you, if you haven't, you'll probably receive a call from me. So. We'll have you taken care of for sure. Great question, Bailey. Thank you. Shall we go to chargers? This one we can actually talk about fairly quickly. Some of our elementary campuses, they already have their chargers cabled and in carts. Leave them as they are. Some of our elementary campuses, and I gave a couple of examples that I thought um, are in that process of collecting, like Seguin, Travis, maybe Rayburn. They're still collecting iPads, so you'll do what Antoine has already said and put the chargers in a box. And remember, the count is on the spreadsheet that Julie shared. Your chargers will probably be used. The plan is to put them back in carts for next year to help you um, with those devices as they stay at the campus for next year. We definitely need all the chargers. Secondary campuses, Antoine has touched on this already, or he actually more than touched on it. He said, you'll be collecting the chargers from the students. You'll place them in boxes labeled the, as chargers, and we would need a count. Here's our big information for you. If a student does not return their charging block and cable at this time, they've brought the iPad, we're thrilled. It's marked on Julie's spreadsheet that she showed you. We're gonna hopefully have you try to persuade them to still keep bringing those chargers back. But at this time, I'm highlighting it on my screen, we will not invoice the student for chargers at this time during this round of device pickup. That doesn't mean next year, brand new Gen 6, Gen 9 iPads in grade six through 12, and possibly a high school student who takes home a charger and an iPad with permission and you know loses it. That's gonna be different. That's a different topic. But right now, we will not advertise to parents that they're off free at the moment. We still have the letters which say, please return the iPad, the case, the charger. Um, but we want to protect our families. They've had the chargers in some cases for um, since 2019, that's five years. That's why we're starting to refresh. So um, we definitely need them to return the chargers if at all possible, because some of them are in great condition and we get kids who withdraw and sometimes those are in fine condition. So if they do try to return a non OEM original equipment manufacturer, non Apple branded, we will go actually have you go ahead and accept it. We're going to keep it separate. We're going to want you to put it in a separate box. Julie's team has already been told this. They're thrilled. Okay. We do go into a few more ifs right here, but it's not about chargers as much now. It's if a student does not return their iPad, yes, those are going to be charged and invoiced. If a student does not return the case, 
guess what? At this time, there will not be a charge for a lack of case during this round of device pickup. Again, protecting our families, we are thrilled to get the iPad back. Doesn't mean we want them to do that. It's just we don't have to take staff time to invoice um, that. So what if a student return does not return the charger, the iPad, nor the case? Like they didn't bring us a thing back. They're going to get charged for the iPad in my school books. Okay. We have the costs on this document, and we'll get to that in just a moment. You can actually see them right here. Um, and I know Antoine wants to cover some of that, if that's okay, as we talk about carts. What questions do you have, though, about chargers, specifically chargers, collecting money or not collecting money? Any questions about chargers? I do like we've been trying to collect chargers since we started keeping our iPads on campus back in February and we have not been successful with uh, collecting those. They've said they've lost them. So do we charge for those chargers? I mean, what's the process? Um, we're going to say at this time during this round of device pickup, we are not going to charge um, for the chargers. OK, thank you. <laughs> Yep, we would love you to keep asking for them by chance. Um, I do want to point out one thing. We're going to give your office staff a one pager. We're creating it today. We thought of it, um, and this is a, a an idea that we just came up with. But we want to tell people if they would like to go purchase a charger to replace that. You know, people worry, and I know I'm one of those people that if you gave me one and you said you need it back, I'm gonna try to find you one, right? So there are places to go purchase those. It's just, we won't purchase it from us. So um, the list has office, I'm sorry, it has um, apple.com. It has the Apple stores. Um, we, are de we are looking at Walmart to make sure they still have the OEM and we think they do but I don't want to put it on the one pager until we verify that. Any questions about chargers before we go to carts with Antoine? Tara, can I jump in and, and give a little yes Thank and, you. and, and yes. A, little bit of, a little bit of the why behind this? Yes. Um, we, we know um, that for some of these students, they've carried these same devices since 2019, um, maybe spring of 2020. Um, so four or five years. Um, as far as we have the inventory system that says that asset tag with that iPad was handed to that student. If we had um, a student um, uh, if we have a student that, that or a parent that can test whether or not that iPad belonged to that student, we can we have means of investigating that. Um, when it comes to the charger, we don't have a piece of paper that says, yes, we unequivocally, we know we handed a charger with the iPad, um, but we don't have that paper trail to defend. And we don't feel that we're in a position to get crossways with parents over that at this point in time. A year from now, um, of course, you know, elementaries, the expectation is these devices will stay on campus next year. Middle school, um, the expectation is we're going to work with you on keeping these devices on campus next year. But we know that there may be a handful of students for whom this is the only means for them to access um, electronics at home and they'll have a process by which they can check out a device. We will have a clear um acceptance form that that they got an iPad, a charger and all of that. So this time next year, we will charge them for the for the charger, but we'll be collecting these every year and not five years later either. So um, so this is kind of our our one year um, grace um, because we know um, the the logistics are a little bit different. So just know that that moving forward, we're not setting the expectation with our families that you just get a pass for throwing away chargers. We just um, felt that it's not a sword worth falling on. Um, however, for those conscientious parents, we do want to 
to try to encourage. We're not advertising up front, hey, it's okay if you don't bring a charger. Um, we we want to ask them to to bring them. For those that, that want to do right, we want them to replace it, but um, not, not a sword worth falling on. Thank you, Dr. Steger. We don't want any of you to have to worry about that as well. It's not worth um, that as well. Antoine, do you want to move to carts? We're getting to the end. I love it. Yeah, we're making it. Uh, carts, just uh, still on the collection spree here. Uh, just asking uh, for one one more collection here. We want the carts all placed in the library. Uh, a count will be recorded on that final count sheet, that spreadsheet that Julie showed you guys uh, earlier so that you'd be able to see that. Uh, there's going to be, where you'll see, you can separate the lock and charge carts from non lock and charge carts. Uh, but we ask that you put all these in the library. Um, do not, please do not, do not, do not hide cards. Uh, it's very important that we're able to count all of the cards and see exactly how many cards we have. Uh, it really helps us make the decision in the future as to how many more additional cards we need, uh, especially when we're moving to um, um, pre-K through eight, uh, keeping devices on campus. This is extremely important. Um, for elementary campuses who have uh, charges in carts that are cabled, not asking you to take those out. You can leave those carts cabled, but we do need the carts to remain in the library. Um, then all carts will have a special lock added. Some campuses have done this already. Uh, we came out and changed some of the locks uh, on the campuses just to make sure we keep those charges uh, uh, secure and that we're not handing them out. And um, here at the Ed Center, our inventory team just does a great job of filling orders for charges, and we truly want to continue to be able to support that. But we need to make sure we understand what's going in and what's coming out, uh, just that we're good stewards of, of, of what we have as we continue to try to buy things that you guys need on campus to make sure that these devices are able to be charged. Um, so carts in the library. I uh, don't have to remove the, the charges and cables uh, if they're already done, uh, but the carts will be emptied out just in case somebody wants to know. It doesn't mean push the carts in there and leave the iPads in. I'm going to ask that you take remove all of the things out of the carts and those things will be boxed like we talked earlier, but we do want the carts to remain in there. And then you see the note for Crockett and Bonham that's just asking that you uh, provide the count for the carry-ons uh, for your campus and place those in the library as well. And then uh, if you look right down, um, a little bit further to the charges that we have there. Uh, you're just kind of seeing what we are charging, what we'll be sending out those invoices for in my school bucks, uh, the Gen 6 iPads, $100 if they're lost or broken beyond economical repair, and then 70 bucks if um, if they're broken or damaged, and the same $70 for the for the Gen 7s if they're broken or damaged, but 150 on those if they're lost uh, because uh, they are um, uh, more recent uh, purchased than the Gen 6s, so the value is different there, so that's why you see the cost difference on those and this information is available for you here and it's also available for your instructional staff and our knowledge base IIQ uh, where we try to plant uh, we're moving to plant more and more training material each day so there's just a quick access point for you guys if you want to uh, find any training materials any questions about your cards or uh, why they need to be in the library uh, any questions about charges for devices Good deal. We're okay. rolling. Awesome. Well, then I will talk about who is going to be doing the collection. And for the most part, it's going to be your instructional technology specialist, your library media specialist, and your instructional media aides. But they need your help. They cannot do it all on their own. If I think back to when I was collecting the iPads before we let the kids take them home all summer. Um, I did it for three years in a row, and it would take me a full week to pick up all the iPads, just myself and my IMA. And we don't have that right now. So we cannot, and I know my team are stressing a little bit. This is the part that they're stressing about because they know that this is a huge undertaking and now they have three campuses so they're going to need your help so any and i love hearing that you're going to be doing it in classes for the most part and having your teachers help i really appreciate that i know the team will appreciate that 
but coordinate with your IMS, your IMA as uh, as much as possible. They can have, as long as we know when it's going to happen ahead of time, they can have the whole team there that day. Now, that means that this school is going to have them one day and this school is going to have them one day. And so be patient with us if you're at the school where they aren't at that day because we want to get everybody done. We want to get everybody's iPads picked up, but we have a lot of the back end stuff as well with the spreadsheets to make sure that we're keeping a good count of everything. And that comes down to our team. So talk with the team, get with them. They've been through all this. They've been given all this information and we let them know that we were going to be talking to you as well. Ask them any questions that you have. If they can't answer it, they'll come back and ask us. A lot of her team picked up devices mm -hmm. 2017, 2018, 2019. Yes. Yes, it was a little different then, but they have some great organizational ideas that can help for sure. Yeah. Thank you, Julie. Antoine, do you want to just talk about Dell laptops? It doesn't apply to everyone here, but there yeah. are some of their students who have Dell laptops. Yeah, just very quickly, the, the Dell laptops will be uh, treated just as our student MacBooks. So we're going to pick those up as well. I know that that affects some of our campuses, GPFA, Gypsy, Dubisky. Uh, you'll have the boxes for those as well. We're just asking that you uh, box those 10 in a box. Uh, we won't pick up anything that's uh, any of the grant laptops or laptops that are over at Crosswinds uh, for Mr. Satcher. I know we, we've got some things over there at Fannin. Uh, we're going to leave those, but you know, the Dells such as those 3150s that you have and, and some of the other ones that you see listed here, we're going to be picking those up. Uh, most of uh, uh, most of your staff know where those are, but again, if we are, um, if we have some teachers that are just kind of hoarding some of those, we want those to come out um, and we need to box those up and allow those to be picked up as well. If I could um, also, if it's all right, go back really quick to the, the sure. schedule for the pickup. Sure, Julie. Be mindful if you are waiting until the very end of the school year to pick these up, the IMS staff is on the same contract as the teachers. And there will be kids who don't bring them. And so we'll need to make sure that there's a plan for kids who don't show up with the iPad, especially if your campus decides to wait until the last day of school, which I would not recommend, if at all possible. Yep. Okay, any questions about that section? Staffing, students who have Dells, because our next section is the FAQs, which is really our last section because the next one is boxes and we've talked about boxes. Okay. Tara, if I can uh, yeah, sure. quickly, I uh, just want to go back. I know uh, Ms. Boyle asked uh, on a previous meeting about when we receive boxes and about how <laughs> high uh, we could yes. stack them. And I told her we would perform a stress test and we did do that. Uh, the goal is to get you guys to start delivering the boxes, um, hopefully by this Friday, and um, to have them to you no later um, than Monday. Uh, if, if we don't, if no delays take place anywhere, uh, that's when you should expect to receive them. And then as far as that stress test is concerned, we've been able to stack uh, the boxes, 20, 20 iPads per box, 10 max per box, and as much as four high um, before we've seen um, um, any issues with, with us stacking the boxes. Excellent. I've updated that little note there. Yep. Antoine, a question that we know had been asked quite a while back was about tape, baggies, labels. Yep. Yeah. So um, thank you for bringing that up. So um, we have a vendor that is coming in to pick up all of these boxes for us. And it was kind of a battle. They wanted us to use um, boxes with better support. Uh, that would allow us to stack them a little bit higher 
but then that would mean that we'd have to tape the boxes ourselves, um, you know, and then that just kind of, uh, that was a, a, a little, little bit more than what we wanted to put on the staff. And uh, as we know, this is already challenging. So we asked for pop-up boxes that uh, just kind of fold and put together, which that's why we can't stack them as high uh, because we're going to go with a quicker box to be able to put together so that you can get the devices in, but they won't stack as high. Uh, so you just won't be able to go more than four high, but um, those boxes do not have to be taped. Once you put the devices in the box, there's also a foldable lid that goes on it. I'm sure you all are familiar with these type boxes. You'll just set those on because truly when the vendor comes in, they're going to open each box. They're going to go in there and they're going to do a count and make sure that uh, what we said we're giving them is what we're giving them. And then we're going to receive inventory for those. And then they will take those boxes off themselves. Uh, and then afterwards, they'll pallet those boxes and then those boxes will be shrink wrapped and they'll be shipped off. Excellent. Can I ask, um, so, you know, we're having them picked up during fifth period and I, you know, our IMSs will obviously be the ones putting in work orders and things like that for the ones that are broken, but I need to have some way to know that that device is a device that is broken and I can't give five different boxes to each teacher. So the plan was to put the ones in a Ziploc bag with a, um, a red little sheet of paper that says, damage won't turn on or broken screen and so that we we know that one needs to be entered um is that okay i mean the ims's will remove it before it goes off to be shipped i think that should be all right to do if they're going to remove it i think you're just trying to keep the classroom together and be able to keep everything in the same box yeah i, I don't see why we couldn't work work together on that is we need to be able to know like this ipad belonged to this kid yeah. just in case they say oh i turned it in well let me verify i can verify because i have your sheet and i know that that one belonged to you or it was moved because it was damaged or broken yeah, yeah. i think that there's going to be instances like that where you work with your team to kind of develop mm -hmm. what works best for you guys the end goal for us is just going to be uh before our vendor comes to pick up the devices that they're all boxed appropriately and ready to be picked up so as long as you work with the team to make sure that uh we meet um, um the, the standards of what we've introduced to you guys in this letter uh, i think what you do at the campus level um, is, is absolutely fine i'm sure there's going to have to be some modifications made to make sure that you can do uh to make it seamless for you guys as well so i don't think i don't see an issue with that you tara julie I don't i okay. see that yeah that's fine yeah One of the things we want to show you are the FAQs because you may have lots of questions come from parents later on. So these we will keep adding to. As you saw, I added the one Ms. Fowler asked us today. Um, if there are other FAQs, we're going to ask you to email myself, Antoine and Julie, and we will definitely answer you. We will probably add it here as well. We are not going to read through 16 FAQs for you, but we would like you to take a look at them if you can, and then please respond back with us if you have any other questions or if we need to clarify. We um, redid number 11. I'm sorry, number, it's the charger one. I just lost it. I had it highlighted and I've lost it. Ah. Uh, we answered this one about plastic bags and labels. Here it is. I'm sorry. What if a student tries to return a non-OEM charging block? We actually will edit this one because we did make a change last night that we will keep it and put it in a separate box. So this one I'm going to edit um, right after we jump off of this one, number nine. We made a slight change last um, evening about that one. Okay. What other questions do you have that maybe we didn't address well enough? Did we miss anything? Our time is up, but we are going to stay along. Antoine's going to have to leave to go to an 11 o'clock meeting. So if Julie and I can't answer it, don't worry, we'll get the answer, but we are going to try our best as well. Thank you for your time, everybody. And I'm sure um, 
Uh, these guys will be great at answering whatever question you have. And Tara, we can debrief a little bit afterwards and I'll sure. see you guys uh, next go round. Thank you, Antoine. Right. I bet some of our friends here have to leave for an 11 <laughs> o'clock as well. <laughs> have a great morning, everybody. But hey, we Tara, will stay. We will definitely stay for questions. Sure. Is that Mr. Lee? Yes, it is. OK, so, sure. Um, this morning, uh, going through a student's backpack during our security check, she had okay. an iPad from Garner. So okay. um, would you like us to deliver that iPad um, to Garner or do you want us to collect it? I would probably like you to collect that. And if you don't mind, can we get it to either Claudia or Melissa? Absolutely. Julie, does that sound OK? Yeah, that's fine. Yeah. Perfect. Thank you for grabbing it. Sure. Hey, Tara, um, sure. I, I updated the directions for the how to clear out the iPad, like sign out of iCloud and how to the clear out to reset the iPad, right? Do you guys have a document that has screenshots of that already on it? Mine is just words. We have a click sheet for you that we'd already created um, because our campus um, instructional staff use it. It's in the letter with the folders because of it, that was really the easiest place to put it for you all because I, we knew people like you had were going to be using teachers. But it is these steps updated as late as even yesterday. Mm -hmm. One more little tweak we made is how to erase the iPad. So okay. that's in the folder for you, my friend. Perfect. Thank with you. With pictures. Thank and, you. I, yeah. I got it. I got to think about my least tech savvy. Tech yes, <laughs> we thought of the least. We tech appreciate savvy that. <laughs> and that we thought of the least tech savvy, and that's why we tweaked it a little bit. <laughs> Perfect. Thank you. So, yes, you all, if you are going to use teachers or other staff to help erase as they put them in the box, we would love you to share that document with them. And it's in your folder for you. What other questions do you have? I I do. I know you said not the last day of school, and I totally understand that. But do you all have like a recommendation for when, um, since we're balancing with three different IMSs? So is it kind of like an urgent as soon as possible? Is it just a recommended time frame to get this done by? I think it part of it depends on when your IMS team is available and I know some of them are already split because camp their campuses have decided to do things on the same day um so I would just get with the staff we don't have a set time it, as far as it needs um as soon as possible would be great if you're testing window for map is you know if you've already completed your map testing i know the team would appreciate that if we could do it as soon as possible but it really depends on your schedule okay thank you and tia don't forget about those assessments. yes tia and for elementaries map. bilingual map on the last week of school for some elementaries for and some, some elementaries, students not all yeah some students not all students You, you might see myself, Antoine yep. and Julie at campuses and Dr. Steger, we may be recruiting you to um, go help with some device pickup. We know what to do. Yes, I already have a list of campuses I'm going to. <laughs> yep. Hey, Tara, I, I know that Jeff and I had talked about a location since our library isn't secure. Did you have a place in mind? Is this for the storage of your devices? Yeah, until they get picked up. Do you have anything? I'm going to pull up that page real quick. Do you have a place where it, what, that room, I can't remember what you call it, but you probably have, no, that room's not going to work because you need to meet in that room sometimes. Wait, can we think on your location? We talked about it a little bit yesterday. Sure. Yeah. I, the draft. You're probably thinking of the draft room in the front by the. Yeah, office. that's not going to work because you need it, that room. It it will work. Um, because we'll be done with AP testing at that point, so I we can have them placed in there. I just need to know, so that we don't have to move them twice. 
where the drop off location is going to be and the library obviously can't be it since it's doesn't have doors. <laughs> okay, right, right. If that were the drop off, the good news is you've heard from Antoine that the vendor will come and pick them up and they're coming fairly. We're going to say fairly soon. We don't have the exact date yet because we, it depends on when they're getting picked up at the campus level, but um, that the vendor will actually come and get them from if you decide draft room, they'll come get them from the draft room. Okay. So maybe we say draft room for now, but we, Julie, let's make a note. We'll think on it with okay. them, with Jeff and Kyla as well, to make sure there's not some better location that works better for you, Leah. Yeah, I think before I got here, they were storing it in what was the school store, but it was because it wasn't be it wasn't complete yet. And so it was empty, but now it's not empty the school. <laughs> So yeah. we can't use that area now, um, but I the, think the draft room will work. I can move my graduation stuff around to make it fit on like a back wall or something. Okay. There's probably not some empty classroom, I'm going to guess, that's that would be better than your draft room, so you don't have to move that stuff. You are hilarious. We I figured to, you would say that. My teacher <laughs> like traveling. Yeah, it's not no. really. Yeah. Okay. In okay. the 15 IDF closets we got installed, I've got nothing. <laughs> Strike that one off the off the possibilities. Might need to be the draft room. <laughs> <laughs> we we can take the IDF closets out and just take a couple of access points and some of your cameras back. <laughs> no, I I need more. So <laughs> needs that worse. <laughs> I need to keep people out of closet, out of offices to to get more. I'll get do that. <laughs> we can do community offices. There you go. There's a security guy you can kick out. He's already in a closet. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Any other questions for Julie and I? We're here for you. Tara, can I make one quick point sure. um, for something to think about for your friends um, that have some diverse learning needs that that um, regularly use some of the accessibility features um, that are built into the iPad? They may have certain settings for font size or for um, colored backgrounds or if, if they are using particular settings. Please know that um, even at elementary, even though you're getting these devices back, Missy Steger is not going to get the exact same device with the exact same um, asset tag. And even if I do, it's going to be wiped. So if you have students who regularly use those accessibility features, I would write those down on a card or something for those students um, so that those could be um, rebuilt back into the settings when they get their devices this fall. Thank you, Dr. Steger. Any other questions for you all? I was a teacher with a lots of wait time mm -hmm. somehow built in and with third and fourth grade. <laughs> well, we want to offer this anything that you think of along the way, even if it's later today in five minutes, a week or two from now, please reach out to us. We're happy to help. We're happy to help your team. Um, we're happy to help work with a schedule that might involve technicians as well. We're planning to send some of them out too. So um, we'll have some extra staff that we can move people around and get really logistically creative um, with doing that. All right. I have, I have a question, sorry. Sure. So if they are charged in my school books and mm -hmm. they opt not to pay it, what, like I will be asked what happens if I don't pay it? Great question, because that's happened, Dr. Hancock, over the years. Um, I'll, I'll tell you my first gut answer that I tell friends when they ask that is at some point, 
they may try to go to a school dance, graduation, prom. At some point, it's harder to let them do those things when they do owe some fines and fees for other things, even if it's not just iPads. Um, so the invoice doesn't go away, doesn't go away next year if they go to Grand Prairie High School. Will they be able to do partial payments over time? Yes. On my school books? Yes. Okay. That okay. is an Thanks. option in my school books. Great question. Wonderful. I may, Julie, I'm going to add that one to the FAQ. Okay. And the plan next year, if they owe money at the beginning of the year, they're going to be given a loaner device um, so that if they would request to take one home, they will not be allowed to until that is paid. I'll add that as well, Julie, to the FAQs. Thank you, Dr. Hancock, for those. That has definitely happened in the past. We mm -hmm. have seen that. We do have a lot of parents making partial payments, though, and we applaud that. So, Julie, I've added a number 17 and an 18. Okay. Can y'all think of any other questions? Hey, Tara, quick question. So, Ooh. we're just trying to figure out, you know, timeline during the school day, like how long this is going to take. Mm -hmm. um, is there a school that's doing it sooner than later? And then I can make sure they make the mistake first and then we just <laughs> don't do whatever they do. Ah, Julie, I bet you might know someone um, who's doing it pretty quick, so right? Great question. I do know that Claudia is picking up at Truman um, starting on May 14th. Okay. So Claudia will have a good idea. Okay. I'm going to say she's one of the pros because she did it she's at South. This. She did it yes. South. Absolutely. When we, you remember, <laughs> when we did it every year, when we picked them oh, up yeah. every year. Yeah. Okay. She's got great experience. Awesome. Thanks, guys. Thank you. Any last questions before we all jump off? Thank you all. Thank you again. Thank you for helping us. We want to help you, so we're here for you, okay? Have a wonderful day. Have a great day. Bye-bye. <laughs> I'm going to stop recording.